Ta-da! So today, I'm actually going to be reviewing this. Um, I've been writing it for ages, and I get a lot of questions about it, so I figured why not actually go through what I like about it, um, and what I don't like about it. Yeah, but just for the record, I do ride for Marine Bikes, so if you feel that that somehow biases my review, well, meh. This is the Marin Four Corners Elite, I think. Let me just check. Yep, Four Corners Elite. It's a gravel, I think it's a utilitor is what they say it is for. So it means it's a bit of everything, bit of gravel, bit of road, bit of everything. Pretty much the ultimate all rounder, I'd say. You know, I use it for work, I've used it for gravel biking, for camping trips. I've put a bike seat on it and taken the little one out on it. Right, so now this is two or three years old. I can't actually remember how old it is. Juliet, how old's my bike? Quite old. Juliet says it's quite old. Yeah, so considering I've been riding this daily, as a daily commuter, for a good two, two, three, I don't know how long, years, you'd have expected a lot of things to be changed and parts to have been changed and a lot of servicing to have been done. I've literally, I've changed the chain. I've changed the cable outer and put new gear cable in. And I've changed the brake pads. I haven't had to re-bleed the brakes. I haven't had to like readjust the gears after I've changed the cable. It's literally just spot on, you know? And that's that's a testament to SRAM rival group set. It doesn't slip, it doesn't miss a shift, it's not had any problems, it's been through all weather, and I really haven't taken massively good care of it. Wicked fade paint job, and everyone knows I love a bit of a fade. It's uh, 11 speed, it has a 1042 SRAM cassette on the back, which is like more than enough for pretty much anything if you're fully loaded. It's got mega gear in a 3842, which takes me up some of the horrible hills around here. It's just perfect like gear ratio. Um, I did toy with changing it to a big one at the front, so I wasn't sure if like a uh, 3810 would be enough, but I've never ran out of gear. Uh, 170 crank. I've just noticed that, it's only 170. I always thought it was 172.5, but clearly it doesn't make any difference because I've never even noticed the size of it. It comes with WTB i25 rims. I've chucked on these WTB exposure tires, set up tubeless, obviously, for commuting. I did have to reseal them the other day because my tape was really crap in the middle and Jesus Christ, tubeless tires sometimes are just brutal to get off. So do your thumb strengthening exercises because actually the good thing about tubeless is that they can fix themselves if you get a little puncher, but if you get a really big puncher, be prepared to have some pain. I've got my little thing here to stop my chain chipping away at my paint because it was ruining my paint and it made me a bit sad. So this is a good thing about wind wax, just pointing this out. So I rode this yesterday to work and it was a bit wet. So, see that? Chain, and normally with a normal chain, your hands would be black by now. So. That's why I'm using wind wax at the moment. It's just low maintenance and once you've got it on there, and if you get it on there properly, it's really good. You've got cage mounts, bottle cage mounts like underneath here. You've got up the top here, one here. So I think you can mount three bottles. Then you've got more room for mounting stuff on your fork, if need be. And what I will show you is the bars. Very, very, very narrow. I did change the stem. It came with a color coded red stem. Um, and it was just really short and stubby and I'm quite tall and I've got quite long arms So I did change that up just so it was a better fit and I've changed the seat to one of these Brooks Cambium C13 with a cutout and it's nice. It keeps my bum all comfortable I'm gonna go get the scales and then we'll actually give it away because I want to know how much it actually does weigh <laughs> So 11.5 kilos, so that's actually lighter than I thought it would be Juliet was telling me to make a list of things that I like and don't like and I was like, I can do this without doing that and I've just suddenly got all stuck now. I said do bullet points. Do bullet points. I no, should have done bullet told points. Them. I told him about the group set that's on it yeah. and how reliable it is and you know I don't take I haven't taken care of it. I've just I've literally just done nothing. What's the geometry like? The geometry is quite relaxed, see look. I don't know the head tube angles. Or anything. You're getting like you're getting, like, you're getting really you're getting really techy with me. Bottom bracket height. <laughs> Look, it's a fucking bike, all right, and it's got <laughs> wheels on it, and it's got that much room between the two wheels, yeah, and the front fork goes at that angle there, and if you <laughs> want to know all this, you can look on Marin's website. It does have tyres, babe, yes. It's got tyres on it. You donut. Both the wheels. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it does come with a 42C Riddler, in the WCB Riddler, and um, there is a little bit more room for a little bit extra. I've actually gone down to a 30C, which is more than enough for me. Things I do like about it, I like that I like that it's really good price point. It is. It isn't 
absolutely awesome price point. You get a full hydraulic disc, SRAM rival group set, chrome oily frame, decent set of branded rims, WTB. This has been designed for a purpose and it, it fully fulfills that purpose. And you can see they've really, really thought about it when they've been designing it. So if you want a, um, like a cycle touring bike that you're not gonna be like, you know, racing over miles and miles and miles, it's definitely worth looking into the Marin Four Corners. You know, it's, uh, it's just one of those really robust bikes that's built to last. Bad points, bars are too narrow. And I don't like flared bars. I know it's like really trendy to have these like flared bars, but not for me. So that's it. I wouldn't, wouldn't really change anything on it apart from the, yeah, the front end. So I'll just switch the bars out. I mean, I still haven't switched the bars out. They're still, <laughs> still the same bars on it, so it can't actually be that much of a problem. But on the whole, if I were giving it a mark out of 10, it'd be like a seven and a half, eight out of 10. The only reason I'd like, you know, 10 out of 10 would be for me if it had a really nice carbon fork on it. That would make a big difference. So you put a nice carbon fork on, take out some of the vibrations. I know steel takes vibrations out, but like carbon fork would be nice. A wider bar. I think that's pretty much it. Is that a really crap review? Hopefully that was slightly informative and not just an absolute pile of shy. <laughs> I say for the price point, it's amazing. You know, it's like two grand. You know? I don't know when two grand seems to start being like a lot cheaper and more reasonable. I suppose when your bike collection goes up and you end up with some really expensive bikes, you're like two grand, it's really cheap, right? But if you think about it, it's two grand and it's gonna last you, like that's it, that's a lifetime bike, you know? So if you want a bike for life, on the whole, really good bike. Uh, if you'd like to see more reviews, hopefully I'll get a bit better at them over time. <laughs> Uh, let me know, do click the subscribe, give me a like, uh, leave a comment, let me know, let me know about your bikes that you're riding, I'm always interested in what all of you guys are doing, um, yeah, and I will see you soon.